Clint, thank you so much for being on my show, the Pet Pig Podcast. Um, I'm truly honored that you would be on with me today, and I'm really, really excited and looking forward to talking to you. Cool. Well, thanks for having me, Autumn. I, it's, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to share a little bit with Earthing with you and, and your followers, for sure. Well, awesome. So first of all, would you tell us a little bit um, about your background and how you kind of got involved with Earthing? Well, that's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they and, want the whole story, they can watch the documentary, right? <laughs> that's, that's true. Uh, so I'll, I'll just give a summary then. Uh, basically, I, I grew up in Montana and um, in, in a rural area. And um, uh, as a young boy, I was a cowboy. I actually sat on a horse and, you know, babysat cows, but it wasn't romantic and all the fun that you see in the movies and everything. But it was uh, it was work anyhow. So anyhow, but I grew up in uh, in that environment. And and in anybody that's dealing with animals, you know that it's about the environment. You have to keep the the environment clean and pristine in order to keep them healthy. And, um, and that's what that's what my job was when I was a kid, was to watch the animals and to make sure that none of them were glassy-eyed or bawling or any, any kind of issues. And if there was, then you take them out of the herd, put them in a holding pen, and then you would um, ride the pasture and see if there's, make, check the water, ride the pasture, make sure the weeds aren't too short, or I mean, the weeds, the grass not too short and the weeds aren't growing <laughs> because something in the pasture uh, it likely made is what contributed to the, you know, the cow being sick. So it's all about prevention. So I grew up with, you know, the, I mean, and, and I'm, I'm 70, I'll be 79 shortly. So, but I grew up with the, uh, you know, the only magazine in the house was prevention magazine. Yeah, an apple a day will keep the doctor away. And, um, and, uh, and, and anybody that deals with animal health, I mean, it's all about prevention, keeping them, keeping them healthy. So, so I, I have that in my background. It's just na natural. So if one of the kids got sick, I would say, you know, what you've been eating, you know, what do you, what did you do? Because this didn't, this didn't happen by accident. You did something. And, um, so, but anyhow, through my whole life, I've always looked at everything from, well, what caused that or what's causing that or what's feeding that. And uh, so anyhow, but, but I grew up in that, in that environment. Then I, I left the, and went to work in the communications industry when I was quite young. And uh, we were pioneering and developing the cable television industry in the hills of Montana and Pennsylvania and places like that. And uh, in, in, in that industry, we had, I learned about um, electrical stability. You know, we're trying to deliver clean pictures or good pictures or, or just pictures, period. Because in the Montana, you had maybe one or two TV stations in a community. And so you, you were very limited <laughs> information and knowledge. And, and the politics was always a war against the right and the left and all, you know, crazy stuff. But anyhow, <clears throat> uh, so when the cable industry came along, I kind of fell in love with it because you could make the world bigger than, you know, the local news and the local TV station. And you could see TV signals from Denver, or I was in Billings, Montana, but you could see, you know, Casper, Wyoming, Denver, Colorado, Atlanta. And, and as the industry grew, now it's, there's 500, maybe 5,000. I don't even know, know how many channels are out there anymore. But, but, but anyhow, so I, I just fell in love with that concept of, wow, the world's bigger than where I live. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than these people that I grew up with, not that there's anything wrong with them. It was just, but it's an interesting world. And now we could see cult, you know, the cultures around the world. So I was just totally in, involved with it from day one. And, but in that industry, when we would run a cable down the street and then we would run service drops into the homes, we always had to ground the, we had to cut the wire and put a ground block in and have the shielding of the cable connected to the ground. And then the in, in the um, inside of the cable uh, where the signal traveled, that would go on into the house and be connected to the back of the TV. So <clears throat> if there was any lightning in the air, then it would be go down, it'll travel on the cable, but it would 
go down the ground, or go to the ground and not go into the house. If it went into the house, it would, it could uh, cause a fire and blow up a TV. And that was a problem. <laughs> and we learned all these things early on uh, because nobody thinks about atmospheric electricity and, and all of the things that go on. The only thing we see is lightning mm -hmm. and occasionally static electricity, you know. And yeah. um, <clears throat> so, um, but anyhow, so uh, I just took it for granted, you know, as we, as we were building out the industry that, you know, everything had to be grounded and we knew it uh, in order to keep to have electrical stability so the signals were always clean and pristine and, and that we didn't have brownouts and you know all kinds of interference that could otherwise happen and so <clears throat> anyhow i spent like 30 years in that industry in fact i i did a lot of uh, you know pioneering in many fields and i was one of the first people oh we developed uh, you know, and just prior to the internet, we went around the world and we collected all the data services, all the newswire services in the world, and we put them together in a unified data stream up in Boulder, Colorado. And by by then, we had learned the satellites were stationary and we could bounce TV signals off a satellite and down to a, a satellite dish and then down a cable system to a home. And but anyhow, so uh, but data to me seemed I was always intrigued with you know, the computers and the data as that was evolving. And um, and I looked at the computer as a TV set without a signal. Mm. So we had to put some live data together to make the computer come to life. And um, <clears throat> so I went around the world, collected all the data services, put them up and bounced them off the satellite. And, and, and then we developed what we call the cable modem, which everybody has one today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, yep. uh, uh, so it's all, so, so I have a heavy background in electrical and electrical stability and in communications to have good, clean signals. And it's all about prevention, doing the right thing and making sure that everything is well grounded, well protected and so on. But when I turned 50, which was 29 years ago, <laughs> it's hard to believe, um, I kind of retired from that industry and, and um, I was living in evergreen colorado on top of a mountain was 50 years old and uh it's like all 50 year old men you know about they go and they go and they go until about 50 they hit the wall mm -hmm. <laughs> the first time i see it they've ever gone to a doctor's office most of them um <clears throat> but anyhow um but i ended up having um uh, a, a health issue at that time and uh when i recovered from it uh and that's a whole story by itself but i don't want to you can go too far here, but but anyhow, as the I recovered from that, and I I, I didn't want to go back to conventional work, you know, like chasing money, mm -hmm. competition, all the craziness, because by then the cable industry was a big industry. It started out, you know, he formed the National Institute of Cable Television, I think NCTA, whatever it was. Uh, in, in the basement of the Disneyland Hotel, and I think there were 30 people there. The last time I went there, there was 30-some thousand people attending a convention. So it gives you an idea yeah. of how, how much big it grew. So anyhow, but anyhow, there's a point where I'm an entrepreneur. I, I look at things differently. I like to work on things, and you know, and um, and once it turns into a business, I really don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> Um, because it's that's a different model. So, but it, but but anyhow, I ended up um, recovering from um, uh, a health, a major health event, and um, I and mean, when I did, I, I knew I didn't want to go back to work uh, in in business, you know, chasing the buck and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. I really wanted to do something that I felt had more value because when you come close to death. Unless you've been there, you don't really know, but you can sense this, that all of a sudden you you your whole life goes before your eyes in just a short period of time. And you look back and you think I, all the things you wanted to do, all the things you could have done and all the things that you really felt that your life would have been a lot better if you had done something. Uh, but anyhow, uh, so I had this at that time I lived on a I had a large home in Evergreen, Colorado, overlooking Denver. So I think you can see all the way to Vail. And um, but the um 
I, I woke up one morning and I looked out the window and and everything was more vibrant, more alive, more electrical, like the pine needles were a more vibrant green. The, the sky was a little more vibrant blue. And I didn't know if it was just from the surgery or whatever. But anyway, I, I, uh, I, I started looking around that room that morning and I had this kind of a, an epiphany in the sense that uh, I almost died and all the things that I had collected my whole life. And I had a huge Western art collection. And I thought, who's going to take care of these things? What would have happened to them? And so I called all the kids and I said, come and take whatever you would have taken had I died, because I'm getting rid of everything else. I had this immediate aversion that I, I didn't want to own anything because I realized that when you when you acquire something, you own something, then you adopt it and you make your life about taking care of it. Mm -hmm. It's like when you collect art, you have to make, make a bigger house, bigger house, so you collect more stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and whatever but anyhow um so i i just had this aversion to owning anything because you don't take anything with you when you leave you don't you I mean it's just you, right. it's, it's a whole different thing mm -hmm. and all of a sudden all the physical things and things that you prized they kind of fade away mm -hmm. the importance or that enthusiasm isn't there anymore mm -hmm. so <clears throat> anyhow i did i gave everything away and uh, i bought a small rv and i spent four years traveling around the united states and mostly in state parks because I grew up in, in kind of wilderness area and I, I still like wilderness area or park area. And um, so when, after about three or four years, I uh, I got, I, I, I had this welling up inside me. I had to go do something, but I wanted to make it about something. Um, I, 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 how do I say this? Uh, you can edit any of this out. You, <laughs> but anyhow, as I, I, I was looking at and and I was saying, next time I die, I want to be able to be happy with myself inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to have done something that I feel good about, mm -hmm. rather than just making money and paying taxes and attorneys and everything that goes with business. And <clears throat> so anyhow, um, I didn't know what to do exactly, but I just had a feeling I had to go back west. I was in Key Largo, Florida, down in the Bay Area. And it's beautiful down there, uh, but then seasons were changing. And, and so anyhow, I felt I had to go back west. So I went back to, um, uh, I'm telling more of this story than I think you wanted, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll keep it, I'll narrow it down here in a bit. But but anyhow, so I ended up going back west, ended up um, um, looking and trying to find a place to live. And uh, I decided I, I didn't want to be in California, so I went to Arizona and didn't want, uh, weren't, wasn't happy there. So one night I was heading up to Flagstaff, Arizona from Phoenix. And I figured I'll go to Flagstaff because that's, they have snow and they have pine trees. And they have things that I, that I grew up with, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so I went on the way up there. I, I pulled in. I was getting late and I pulled into a little town called Sedona, Arizona. And it's a tourist, kind of a touristy town. And it was like 10 o'clock at night, pitch dark. But it had an RV sign, so I just pulled in and found the RV park, pulled in, and went to sleep. The next morning, I woke up, looked out the door, and wow, I said, I'm not leaving here. This is like living in a national park. <laughs> it's a really a beautiful place. And so I spent two years there, but while I was there, I ended up getting back into, they had a lot of art galleries, and I loved art. So I started, got involved, worked my way in, got, got involved with uh, lighting some of the professional art shows that came to town. Oh. And all of a sudden I was working with electrical again. Uh, and this is where the story starts. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, one day I was getting ready to order some uh, some um, lighting stuff from the wholesale house down in Phoenix. And and I was I would do installations in the galleries and try to make them make the art look better because most of the time you have to wear a baseball cap when you go to an art gallery mm -hmm. there's too many light bulbs so anyhow i was just trying to make the art look good and make it look like the artist intended and um and so i i got really like pretty good following and ended up doing a bunch of work in scottsdale and taos and it was just a hobby they don't pay you any money because they don't have any money yeah <laughs> but it was something to do but anyhow one day uh, I had I was ordering some. This is back in ninety seven, ninety eight. I was ordering some parts on a computer, and the computer every time I touch it, it would crash. 
and glitch and crash and lock up. And I knew it was from static electricity because the air was very dry and so on. So I took a piece of copper tape and laid it across my desk, connected it to a ground wire and connected it to a ground, outlet ground. And then I would touch the tape before I touched the computer. That solved the problem. That's how sensitive electrical stuff was back then because they didn't ground computers back then. Oh, so and, and they always had a lot of problems. Software would glitch up and just you know, it was just uh, yeah. But anyhow, so after I did that, I uh, fixed it, got my order, and I went outdoors and I sat on a, on a bench outside, and and a big tour bus pulls up, and they it's a it's a, it's a Japanese tour group, and they're kind of a shorter in stature group of people, and they kept coming off the bus, and, and it was just a whole big group of them, but they all had white nike type tennis shoes on and it was like they had been to a mall strip mall and uh, white nike shoes were on sale and everybody bought the same pair mm -hmm. but that's what it was just that's what it felt like so anyhow i don't know what had happened but i just intuitively asked myself i said i wonder if there's a consequence to humans no longer being naturally grounded connected to the earth and the reason I asked that is because I grew up, when I grew up, we were barefoot most of the time. Uh, when school was out, when the shoes were gone. The only mm -hmm. time you can get them on us mm -hmm. is, is to go to a wedding or a funeral or something. Uh -huh. and, and then school came and then you had to get them so they would go back on your shoe because they were leather back then. They were, mm -hmm. And oftentimes you didn't get new shoes. You got hand-me-downs and yeah. so on in the old days. And um, so... So anyhow, I, I don't know what, nothing, nothing really prompted. I didn't know, but I just took a big interest in that. And I knew a lot about grounding because I spent 30 years in yeah. the communications industry grounding things for electrical stability. I knew the body was electrical and I knew it was conductive because if you stick your finger in a shock, you're going to get shocked. Mm -hmm. um, so that means the body's conductive and that means, and, and, and then everything in the body is electrical, your muscles, your brains. Everything in the body is electrical first, chemical second. There has to be an electrical phenomena before there can be a chemical phenomena. And um, so eating blueberries is great, but um, that's another story. Anyhow, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but anyhow, so I um, I went home that night and I didn't really know the answer, but I was just really intrigued. So. I dug out a couple of old voltmeters that I had and some, and I took and I took a made up a ground rod, put a wire, a ground in the earth, put connected it to me, and then I started walking around inside my house connected to the earth because I was comparing my body to the earth, mm -hmm. and so I was walking around carrying the meter, and so I could see the voltages go up and down on my body. Every time I would take a step, I would create static electricity. And so every step we take, no matter who you are, as long as you're wearing dissimilar synthetic clothing or rubber sole shoes and carpets and so on, every step you take, you're making, you're creating static charges on your body. And you won't feel a static charge unless it's three to 5,000 volts. But everybody has felt that when they touch yeah. a doorknob or something. Mm -hmm. So that's how significant, this is very high voltage. And this is just static electricity from fabrics. And then we have, you have the EMFs from electrical appliances and and devices and and uh, cell phones and mm -hmm. you have all of this noise electrical noise in our environment that wasn't there 50 years ago right or 60 years ago and um, so I, I but you could see and measure all of it and I thought wow this is pretty crazy I didn't have I had no idea I knew about it on electrical equipment but I've never thought about the body Mm -hmm. But the body, when it's not grounded to the earth, it's an antenna. It attracts these electric fields. It attracts static charges. And so we're a magnet for But mm -hmm. as soon as you get grounded or touch the earth, then electrically, it's, it's, grounding is an electrical term in the sense that when you touch the earth, then the, the earth has a slight negative charge, meaning uh, it's like, 200 millivolts, uh, negative, meaning there's 
200 millivolts of free electrons that can move quickly and move anywhere in the world and reduce charge. That's what lightning is. Mm. You see uh, a welling up of, of electrons on the earth and it'll reach up, create a fissure, and then there'll be a crack and boom, there'll be a lightning strike. Um, <clears throat> so, but that's the, that's what happens with nature. I mean, that's how nature uh, prevents the buildup of charge through lightning and evaporation and condensation, all those things. So, <clears throat> so anyhow, I, I uh, started playing around. I, so I took the, and went, went to the hardware store and bought a roll of three inch wide metal duct tape. The guys will love this. <laughs> <laughs> Just a plain old, uh, you know, the stuff you wrap around mm -hmm. uh, uh, heating pipes. And but it has to be aluminum, and so I could, laid it on my bed, taped it onto the mat, or onto the sheet, connected it to the wire that I had thrown out the window, and connected it so it was grounded. So the electrons of the Earth, the Earth's negative surface charge, comes up the ground wire, and then onto the tape. So if I lay down on the tape, it should go. My body should all this noise and all the stuff that's in my environment should go to zero. Mm -hmm. And it does. So, but anyhow, the first time I did that, I said, wow, this is amazing. There's a lot of things going on. I don't know, but it doesn't seem to be harmful. But at that time, I was 54, I think. And I had horrible pains. I had skied for 30 years. I had played tennis, ankle injury, knee injuries. And I was a cowboy. <laughs> and, cowboy and cowboys are crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, <clears throat> but anyhow, so I had a lot of aches and pains in my body. And so I didn't know anything about health or anything at that time other than pain, you know, or um, so, but anyhow, so I, that night I was just playing with the meter and it was late and I remember laying on the bed and I had the meter there and, and then all of a sudden it was morning and the meter was down by my side. I had fallen asleep and the significance was for me to go to sleep back then is I usually had to take a pain pill or Mm -hmm. or do something because I just had chronic pain and I never slept well at all. But you know, that night I just fell asleep. I said, whoa, there's something going on here because normally I don't sleep. <laughs> and uh, so I played with it for a few more days and the same thing. And I couldn't, under I looked on the, tried to do a little bit of research and, but there's nothing on grounding in mm -hmm. biology and um, or in the liter current literature. And so anyhow, a couple of friends that I had in Sedona um, I, that I had met there, and I said, you guys need to try this because they all had, they're about my age, had pain, couldn't sleep. And I said, you guys have to try this. And so I went over and did the same thing. One of the wives got really upset because we I think we screwed up one of our sheets. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, um, a couple of days later, one of them came back and he said, he said, this stuff really does work. You know, he says, he says, but do you think it could have anything to do with my arthritis? I said, I don't think so, because I was just thinking, well, it makes you sleep better. Right. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden I realized that my chronic pain had almost completely diminished in just in a few days. And I thought, wow, this is this is a miracle. Mm -hmm. And I said, how come nobody has ever told me about this? How come I've never heard of this? And here I know everything about grounding equipment and electrical and uh, electrical stability and all that. But, but the human body, we, we never think about ourselves. We always think about what we're doing out there. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And I can protect equipment, but I didn't, I, I had no idea that the body was affected and by and large people still don't but so anyhow i uh, i started a that started me off on this journey i it all started with that one question i wonder if there's a consequence yeah. to us no longer being naturally grounded and um, so then i spent time down at university of arizona and worked with a group down there for a while then never got any answers so i think well i'll go out to ucla those guys are smart they know everything. And I went out there <laughs> and it was really funny. Um, I got a meeting with, uh, I think it was this, this, I forget which lab it was, but it, was, it had to do with the sleep lab. And they said that you expect us to believe that somebody's going to put a nail on the ground, tie a wire around somebody's toe, and, uh, and then they're going to sleep better. And they said, get out of here. You're nuts. Go away. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, uh, you know, but I learned real quick, they did not understand anything electrical. 
and I really didn't understand, you know, biology. I mean, mm -hmm. I just didn't have um, animal husbandry. It's, it's all the same. And I always wondered why cows never experienced pain mm. like, like, like humans. A human hurts themselves and it's just chronic pain. And the animals, they don't manifest that hot burning oxidative pain that humans do. Wow. Um, so anyway, we can talk about that in a minute. But anyhow, so so this went on and on. And so finally, I ended up uh, being able to engage a couple of the guys, young students at UCLA, to help me figure out how to do a study. And I moved out to Ventura, California, so I could be close. I couldn't handle L downtown LA. That. But anyhow, so I um, um, <clears throat> we designed a study, and so we grounded we, I made little grounding mats that were 12 inches wide and 24 inches long and connected them to a wire that, and they were conductive and connected them to the earth and so then we had, we found 60 subjects 30 of them had real grounding products 30 mm -hmm. of them had dummy grounding products and <clears throat> and um so then we grounded them for, I think, 30 days or a month. And uh, as when they went out and started collecting the data, the number one thing that came back, everybody slept better. Everybody felt better. Everybody had less pain. But then we started hearing things like uh, PMS issues disappeared. Uh, TMJ disappeared. Uh, just a host of those kind of normal things that everybody has. Uh, this was impacting all of them. And I remember somebody said, well, this can't be a cure-all. And I looked at them and said, I don't think it's a cure-all. I think it's a cause-all. Yeah. I think that we, we disconnected from the earth and we lost our ground. Mm -hmm. And But this is back in 2000. And um, at that time, nobody had heard of the word inflammation. That's hard to believe. Yeah. 20 years ago, it was 19, 19, uh, 202, 203, 204. I think it was actually in 204 when there was a Time magazine uh, front page of the, where there was a, a body on fire and it, mm -hmm. said it had the word inflammation. And below the summary was, you don't have cancer, you don't have cardiovascular disease, you don't have all these health disorders, these named health disorders. What you have is chronic inflammation and it manifests differently in different people based on their genetics and based on their um, environment, mm -hmm. you know, how they live, right. what they eat, you know, these things. But it all starts, you have to have chronic inflammation first. And, and for four years, we had been trying to figure out why does grounding reduce pain? And we had no clue. Uh, why do we put, why do you, when you, you can take a lady with MS and take an electrode patch and put it in the palm of her hand and ground it to a, an electrical ground. And in five, 10 minutes, her pain will drop by 90%. And, but we had no explanation. But it was about 205, I think it was, that um, I was reading some literature and uh, reading about the immune system. And I, I read an article where they were talking about how the uh, if you have a pathogen in the body or a damaged cell or a cell that needs to be destroyed, that <clears throat> the immune system will send a neutrophil over a white blood cell. And then it's kind of a jelly type cell and it'll wrap itself around the pathogen. And then it will release what they call reactive oxygen species. Yeah. As soon as I heard the word reactive, then I realized that this is an electrical. It's a reactive, meaning it, it's a voltage, it's charges. So reactive means it can rip. <clears throat> so it, it, uh, these reactive oxygens can rip an electron and pull it away from the pathogen structure. Mm. And that's how the immune system destroys pathogens. Oh, interesting. And <clears throat> so, um, so anyhow, then... I just started thinking, I said, well, if we're grounding somebody, what are we doing that's, you know, so we're, the body, we're, the body is positive, meaning it, it, it equalizes with the atmosphere. But when you're grounded, you equalize with the earth. Mm -hmm. 
from the beginning of time, all animals and all plants were involved, you know, came from the earth. We are the earth, you know, mm -hmm. and, and we, and, and uh, we were always naturally grounded. Yeah. Um, and then in 1960, you can take over this conversation anytime you want, <laughs> but, but in 1960, um, we invented plastics, polymers. Yeah. First thing we did is <clears throat> um, we put synthetic plastics on our soles of our shoes. Right. And everything was great because everybody could wear shoes. You didn't have to worry about rain and galoshes. You didn't have to worry about all that. And um, so, so everybody could afford shoes, and that was great. And then they made these ugly plastic green shag carpets. I don't know if you ever saw one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But we had an orange, orange one. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say there was orange and yeah. green and whatever. But then that was the next fad. And then television came along, you know, in the 50s. But it was by the 60s, everybody was spending more time indoors watching television. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, we had the, this major change in our environment. We were no longer barefoot outdoors. We were we just didn't go barefoot anymore because mm -hmm. everybody could afford. And then shoes became bad. You you were poor. There was something wrong with you. Right. You, you didn't wear shoes. Right. And um, and being a, you know a farm boy, a ranch boy, you know, you know they they had their problems anyway. <laughs> but but anyhow, um, so at all at once we had televisions. Uh, so we spent more time being entertained indoors than out. When we were young, you couldn't get us in the house. We'd sleep in the barn before we'd sleep in the house because there was something to do out there. Yeah. <laughs> and and um, um, so anyhow, we we left the outdoors. We lost our ground. We put shoes on. We started living in homes, and we started putting carpets on our floors. Before then, uh, you either had a dirt floor, an earthen floor, tile floor, or wood. Mm -hmm. And now everything is linoleum and right carpets and all these things and static electricity and 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 then it just went on and on then we started bringing all these electrical devices into our home and yeah. electrifying everything and so there was a huge change but it was about 1960 so then in our research if you go back and look at what happened you know look at health in the 1960 time frame versus today our 2000 era, only 40 years. <laughs> um, in 1960, 90% of the visits to a doctor or a practitioner were for infectious disease, acute injury, and childbirth. Right. Oh. Today, yeah. 90% of the visits to a doctor are for an inflammation related health disorder. Right. And that, that's everything from autism to lupus to MS. Mm -hmm to cancer, to cardiovascular disease, and there's a hundred of them. Right. So, but, so anyhow, so the whole, in this process, uh, the question was all the time, how does grounding reduce pain? Mm -hmm. Because that's what we first observed. And then when this, Ritger and the boys back at Boston Mass came out with this inflammation paper, then all of a sudden I, I said, you know, if what they're saying is true, then we know the cause of inflammation because when you ground the body, then the inflammation disappears because what we were describing as pain, you have to have, you can't have, and pain is a byproduct of inflammation. You have to have inflammation first, then you can have pain. And pain is a way of telling the body, I'm on fire, get me out yeah. of here. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> so... This was, you know, this is a, a 20, a 20, 20 year journey, 20, almost 25 now. Um, I'm just pasting this together because I, I wasn't a scientist, but I hired a lot of them. Mm -hmm. I wasn't an electrical engineer, but I hired a lot of them. Uh, I had that ability, fortunately, and I had time. Yeah. And I didn't want, and I didn't want to work, work for the van or the money anymore. And so it, it was just a, a coincidence and I'm grateful that I got to be a part of this because it entertained me for 25 years and still going on doing as much work today as I ever did 
But, but anyhow, so the bottom line is what happens? How does grounding reduce um, inflammation, prevent inflammation, pain, and, and prevent these uh, autoimmune diseases, damages, and so on? So what we realized is when the body is grounded, it's negative and meaning no charge, but there's excess electrons that are mobile. They're free to move. And it's just, they come from the sun. They come from, you know, I mean, it all starts with sun mm -hmm. <laughs> and it comes to the earth and photons and electrons and so on. And, <clears throat> and the, uh, you know, if there were no electrons on the earth, there could be no life on the earth. So it all starts with the sun. So anyhow, mm -hmm. the sun comes to the earth and, and through photosynthesis, you know, we can plants grow and uh, we can eat their food and we can grow. And, you know, it mm -hmm. just goes on and on. And we, and the animals say, everybody eats each other and whatever, but it's, it's one big symbiotic, you know, lunchbox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so but anyhow it's um um i, I have to stay on track here um <laughs> the um <laughs> so once i realized that the body becomes 20 or uh, between 20 and 200 millivolts negative when you stand barefoot on the earth that means that these free electrons on the earth migrate up into your body and then your body as a whole is at earth potential, mm -hmm. meaning you and the earth are one and the same. Electrically, you and the earth are one and the same. The earth is infinitely large. You are infinitely small. You don't have a chance to do anything but equalize with the earth. Okay. <clears throat> now, as soon as you disconnect from the earth, put shoes on, uh, stand on a carpet or stand above the earth or live upstairs, whatever, now, all of a sudden, you, you lose your ground. You lose that negative charge. And then your body starts bleeding off these free electrons as you breathe oxygen mm. because your body's kind of a fuel cell, you know. And, <clears throat> and then you end up becoming short of electrons. And then, so here's the immune system. Your body has to reduce lots of pathogens every day. You breathe them in. I mean, they're everywhere. Uh, and there's all kinds of radicals around um, um, the food you eat, metabolic processes, just everything produces. Um, I mean, the immune system is, is the, uh, it's who, I mean, it's, it's what got us here. It's the most important thing, mm -hmm. you know, is our immune system. So our immune system is used to identifying pathogens or damaged cells or whatever and destroying them keeping the, the system clean. So all of a sudden, if you don't have enough electrons, and so the immune system recognizes a pathogen, it sends a neutrophil over, and the neutrophil does its thing, it encapsulates and oxidizes that pathogen. If there's any remaining radicals left over after the initial oxidative burst, then they're going to steal an electron from something in three or four nanoseconds. You don't build up free radicals, you build up free radical damage. So anyhow, these free radicals will, or these radicals will go steal an electron from an adjacent cell and damage it. The immune system sends another neutrophil to clean up that problem. Mm -hmm. And in the same process, uh, there's still leftover free electrons, I mean, or free radicals. And so you set up a chain reaction. It's kind of like taking a match and starting a fire. Mm -hmm. So an oxidation, I mean, it's identical to fire. So <clears throat> the body's on fire. That's why they called it infl inflammation. That's how the word inflammation came. The body is on fire. It is actually oxidizing itself. The immune system is oxidizing the body. But as soon as you ground the body, then the body becomes flooded with free electrons, like jumping in a lake, <laughs> getting wet. But you're, now your body is different. Your body is full of negative or free electrons. These free electrons only do one thing. They reduce charge. So if there's a charge anywhere on the planet or anywhere, if there's a charge, the free electrons will zap 
instantly and reduce them. So when your body is grounded, it is negative some 20 to 200 millivolts. <clears throat> negative meaning no charge, just excess free electrons that can move. And so they can instantly go and in the body, your body's, they're there all the time, as long as you're grounded. And so any, they, so the immune system now, it goes and has an oxidative burst, wipes out a pathogen. And so if there's any remaining radicals, so those earth free electrons in the body automatically reduce them and prevent them from damaging healthy tissue. Okay. So really every single person on the planet should be yeah. grounded. <laughs> they should be in an easy way to ground is to put your feet on the earth or sit on the yeah. earth, put your hands on the earth, whatever it is. It, as long as you don't have shoes on and your skin is touching the earth, then those free electrons can flow into our body. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's, it's, auto it's automatic. Okay. So then um, what is a good amount of time for us to actually sit on the earth and allow that to happen? That's the question everybody asks, and, <laughs> and I give them the answer they wish they, they hadn't have asked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can take, uh, and I'll use MS as an example because I work with a lot of uh, younger women who have MS. I can take a lady with MS, I can take an electrode patch, cardiac EKG patch, mm -hmm. just put it on there uh, because it'll, it, better conductivity and connected to a ground rod and, or connected to the earth. And within five, 10 minutes, that hot burning uh, anxiety pain will just calm down. Within 15 minutes, her color will change. She'll become more pink, like you know the kids are when they're outdoors playing. Mm -hmm. and, and then all of a sudden her demeanor will change because she's not, doesn't have that tension. Mm -hmm. and, and then she starts to smile. And, and then she said, uh, you know, it just goes on and on from there. And I remember the average girl after they get grounded for 30 minutes, if they get up and go to the bathroom, whatever, they come back, they come, half of them come back crying and they say, wow, I look like my old self. You know, I feel like my old self. And, and, uh, but anyhow, it's a very, it's, so it's rapid. This isn't like, uh, this is electrical. Our electrical is speed of light. Mm -hmm. So, so <clears throat> if you have charge in the body, pathogens uh, that are, I mean, uh, radicals that are oxidized, oxidative radicals, they're going to be reduced instantly and prevent this fire. So you cannot, so what we know and what I know from my background in the communications industry, you cannot have charge in a grounded object. If I ground an amplifier or if I ground a cable system, there can be no charge because it will instantly be grounded to the earth. It'll be absorbed by the earth or the earth will okay. release electrons and reduce it. So, so then I just applied that to the body. You can't have charge in a grounded body. You can't have inflammation. Inflammation can't maintain in a grounded body. Now, <clears throat> if you abuse your body more than you do good or whatever, or if you, you know, depending lifestyle has a lot to do okay. with, yeah. you can, you can still crater your immune system. Even when you're grounded, you can, you know, you can do harm to your body. Right. Uh, and a lot of people do. But anyhow, um, but in just, it's just plain nature. Uh, all of us came from, all of our progenitors were grounded. They were naturally grounded. We lived in caves. We grew things. We, our hands were in the earth, mm -hmm. on the earth. Uh, but we were we were in living in harmony with the you know the natural uh, phenomena of the earth and <clears throat> so as long as you're grounded your immune system is fine if you can't I, I honestly don't believe you can have cancer or any of these modern health disorders if you get grounded and stay grounded 100 percent of the time now to think that out if I'm not sure where you live but if you go out in the woods, go down I live in creek. Ohio and I okay. have woods in my backyard. <laughs> okay, but you go out there and away from the people a little bit. And if you've got deer or other animal running around or wild animals 
which you do all over the place. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you look at them, they all have health. They're healthy. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, they eat natural food and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> but most importantly, they're grounded. And, and so if you look at the animals who live indoors with their owners, and I don't know if you want to hear this, but um, the animals who live indoors with their owners, um, they have the same death rate from cancer as the owners, about 50%. Yeah. Or cancer, cancer does not exist in nature because you have an immune system that prevents that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so now to answer the question, any amount of grounding is better than no grounding, okay. no matter what it is. Even if it's just going outdoors and putting your feet on the bare feet on the earth for 15 minutes, I would say five, but do it for 15. You'll okay. get better for those. <laughs> um, then um, if it if your pain goes away and you start feeling better, your circulation improves, your demeanor changes, your mood changes, maybe you want to ground for an hour, <laughs> you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But but anyhow, to learn about grounding, you have to start. So you go outdoors and just um, put your bare feet on the earth and start spending time grounded mm -hmm. and then notice the changes. And most of the time you won't remember pain. Pain goes away. You never real, remember you had pain. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's hard to remember things. So sometimes you may have to make a note or say, right. oh, yeah. But, <clears throat> but anyhow, so any amount of grounding will, for a period, reduce charge, you know, ground the body, the body, then it will stop the inflammatory processes, give the immune system at least minutes or a little longer time to clean up a little bit of damage and, and give you a chance. And then you can do it more routinely. So any amount of grounding is good. But if you have pain in your body, I'm going to tell you, you need to ground until the pain stops mm. because pain is just telling you that your body is full of inflammation mm -hmm. and your body's on fire. Yeah. And, and so, and if you have inflammation in your body, it usually manifests as, you know, pain for sure. Then it's saying anxiety, irritability, depression, and all of those kind of things. And then it's ele more chronically elevated cortisol. And then that feeds, you know, that exhausts the adrenals and, and then, um, you, then you become more pain and, and like fibromyalgia than lupus, MS, those kind of things, and so on. Um, so, so anyhow, it's I could go on and on and on, uh, but I want to well, be very helpful here. Well, <laughs> let me let me say that I um I saw the Earthing documentary last year, uh -huh. and it resonated with me immediately. I was like, there is definitely something to this. Um, yes. I ordered some products from. Well, I saved some money. I ordered some products, so yep. all of us have a grounding mat for our bed. Um, my feet are on a grounding mat right now. Um, right. Everywhere in the house, we have ways that we can ground and, and we are, we have a homestead. We are an outside family. So we're outside barefoot. We, uh, my kids play outside barefoot. So we are definitely um, seeing the benefits of it. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Um, I, when I ordered the products, I got the book, the earthing book. And so yes. I read that and there was a chapter towards the end of the book talking about animals pets that live inside the house. And yes. I am, um, I am very big, like I'm in the pet pig community. So, um, mm -hmm. I, I breed them. I have a couple litters a year and then I help people all over the world who have behavior problems with their pig. Yes. We do a zoom consultation. I help them through that. So I've talked to a lot of pig families and right. I've noticed some things about pigs. I've noticed that um, there are health problems creeping in and arthritis really bad in the pig community of these. And a lot of these pigs spend 90% of their day in the house or even all of their time in the house. Yes. So I got interested in this because I wanted to kind of hear if there, if um, how can I say it? Like if, if that sounds crazy or if that sounds legitimate. <laughs> well, no, all of the animals, I mean, you can go talk to a vet. 
and I know a few of those because one of my one of my relatives owned the the veterinary supply wholesale supply in Montana, and so I've been around vets my whole life. But the vet industry really took off, you know, the last twenty years, mm -hmm. and it's huge, and it's all related to this because now all of the indoor pets they have all the same health disorders as the owners do. They have diabetes. They have all the arthritis, all of the um, the cardiovascular, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're no, we're really no different. We're similar, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, so, <clears throat> yeah, these pets have to be grounded. Now, cats, most of them are smart. Most of them will find a grounding mat if somebody has one in the home, and, and they'll stay on it or use it frequently. And a lot of the dogs, they're more social. They want to be playing with, you know, mm -hmm. their owner. Mm -hmm. and But they will sleep grounded on it. And, uh, but a lot of, um, you know, it's like parrots and stuff. We've grounded parrot cages and stuff. So the ones who pull the feathers and all that, yeah. they automatically calm down. Um, and, you know, the behavioral problems, you know, but, but grounding. So <clears throat> think of it this way. Um, and you know, you're absolutely right. So what you have to do is you have to, wherever your pig is sleeping at night, I mean, if they're in a, you know, if they're confined, then mm -hmm. they have a small grounding mat for them to lay on, like one of those little uni mats or whatever. Yeah. They'll might they'll might migrate to it, uh, uh, and especially if they have arthritis. The dogs who have um, arthritis and dysplasia and those kind of things, a lot of those get grounded, and they have remarkable results. Wow. Um, because these diseases don't get better. Right. You can go to the vet and you can get certain drugs that are going to help and so on, but they're expensive. Mm -hmm. Going to a vet is very expensive today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> and I don't have anything against the vet. I mean, right. They, right. Did, they, did, they do their thing and right. we're glad they're there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but anyhow, to prevent some of these inflammation related health disorders, you can, uh, you can look up inflammation related health disorders for humans and they'll apply to all the, uh, you know, all the animals the same if they're indoors, because indoor animals, 50% of them are dying from cancer and, and, and related um, metabolic syndrome disorders. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and animals outdoors in the wild, you know, sure, they get eaten when they break a leg or, or if they get too old and so on, but they have health. They have quality of life, health. Mm -hmm. So let me, um, I was going to mention the, I can't remember all my thoughts anymore. I get going too fast. <laughs> but um, it's like, I remember one time when I was a kid, uh, we were out in the pasture and there was a cow and a calf off to the side and it was a snowstorm. And we were quite a ways from the barn and um, we went over there and the, the mother cow was standing there just over the baby and uh, <clears throat> the calf had had a gash on its side about you know maybe 12 inches long and we didn't know whether it was from an animal or from mm -hmm. a from a uh, barbed wire or whatever and anyhow so it had this gash but half of its intestines were hanging out you know out of the mm -hmm. uh, where it was open and so my dad <clears throat> I mean she was laying there and but she wasn't bawling or anything she was just laying there and so my dad went over and pushed the intestines back inside took some thread out of a saddle bag you know normal thread that you always have when you're doing things like like ranching and stuff and um so anyhow he sewed her up and it was very crude just mm. but it was cold and whatever and he said there's nothing we can do for her because we can't put her on the back of the horse and take her back so we just had to leave her there and but anyhow but the mother stayed there with her and so on and we didn't think anything about it and we had like 800 head of cattle at that time so you know you, but anyhow one day i noticed that this calf was out running around with all the rest of them and what always blew my mind was that okay my dad his hands were dirty Mm -hmm. There was no, nothing was sanitized. Um, it was cold. So that will kill right. a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, but anyhow, 
um, that calf wasn't bawling or screaming or anything like that ever in that in the, when all that was going on. And um, and I remember we were listening on NPR or something one day, and somebody, some scientist, was talking about they didn't know, if, you know, if animals had feeling or if they felt pain or various things. And I asked myself, are these people are idiots? They're crazy. They don't understand anything. And I said, because you know, animals they have emotion. They're just like us. They're social, mm -hmm. and they want to interact, and they have feelings. And and so I didn't understand the pain thing. And then. Um, I didn't understand. I didn't put this together until, you know, maybe 20 years ago or more. <clears throat> but I recognized that, OK, here's this cow is laying on the ground. You cannot have inflammatory pain. That What that means is if you can if you have surgery and you take an electrode patch and, and ground the arm next to, or part of the body next mm -hmm. to where the pain where the incision is, you won't have that hot and burning Vicodin pain. The one you need, the dentist gives you the Vicodin for. Mm -hmm. You won't need pain. For that you will have pain but it'll be a, a, a more dull subtle pain that says leave me alone let me heal but you don't have that the vicodin type pain wow. and i maybe shouldn't say name brand but but anyhow that's fine um, but in, but anyhow so um then i recognized and because i started grounding myself using patches and i had some dental work done one time and, and i put a patch on and um I didn't have any, I didn't have any of the pain. And then uh, I just, I could go on and on. And so then I realized that this calf was grounded. So it couldn't have the Vicodin hot burning pain. All it had was the healing pain. And that's tolerable. Anybody can tolerate that. Yeah. And so then I started putting it together. That's what's different about animals who live in the wild. They don't suffer from oxidation like, ungrounded animals so yeah the, I, I can't tell you loud enough that yes uh these pigs need to be grounded somehow mm -hmm. some portion of the, of the time the more you can ground them the better but if you can have an area for them just a mat they have those mats in fact i'll send you one if, if you'll send me an email an address uh, uh, there i think they're 60 inches long and 20 some inches wide and they're they're soft we use them uh, for people to stand on or yeah. stand up. So, yeah. But just if you want to just play with it, experiment with it and see what it happens. Just, yeah, I definitely want to try that. I Does he sleep um, in a pen or does he sleep in a, half of them sleep with their owners? Yeah. Uh, um, My pig doesn't sleep with me. She sleeps in a crate. <laughs> That's um, what I mean. And, you know, I'm, like I'm for talking, my... I, was about, I wasn't talking about pigs. I was talking about pets. Oh, half just in pets. general. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well... For me, um, my pet pig who lives in the house with us, she gets outside time every day. Um, yeah. She's trained and I have an area for her. And so she does ground every day. Yes. But I, these piglets that I have that are born, I have a space in my house where the mother comes in and gives birth and I take the piglets out when they're old enough. But if it's winter time in Ohio, I can't take them out. And nope. it's interesting. Something that I noticed is that my winter litters tend to lose hair. Yes. They, right. they kind of get some bald spots. Um, yeah, can, they I... might not grow as quickly type of a thing. And now, 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 now you know what I know. Mm. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll tell you. There was a group up in Alberta, Canada, that did a study. They took, you know, they they have these rats that they use for lab testing. Yeah. And anyhow, so I didn't really want to do an animal study, but but anyhow, so they had they take these breeder rats and they they have six litters, and then after that they euthanize them. Mm. And I said. You know, I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take, let's take a group of these, because they're middle-aged women at that time, <laughs> or young women, and because they've had their letters and so on. And then, but people, usually women 35 and above are the ones who start developing all the autoimmune diseases. Mm -hmm. So I said, let's mimic them around that. So we grounded 30 of them and, and didn't ground the other 30 and let them live out their life. And then we measured the difference. Well, one of the number one things that showed up in the ungrounded rats, they all lived similar length of life, but the quality of life was the issue. So anyhow, the ungrounded rats uh, had all ele uh, elevated 
um, um, metabolic syndrome markers, you know, all of the things that go with all of those things. But number one, they had uh, the, the most significant thing is they all suffered alopecia, hair loss. All the ungrounded rats had suffered alopecia. The grounded rats did not. Oh. <clears throat> and, and then not only that, the ungrounded rats weighed, I think, 13, 14% more than the grounded rats at the end of their life. Now, in rats, so that you know, it's, well, it's like the average person weighing you know, 10, 15 pounds more than they should, you know. Wow. So, so you know, we, I don't talk about the rat studies because a lot of people don't don't, don't want to hear it. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's just the way it is. You know, that's that's how they find a lot right. of things. Yeah. And and uh, I took good care of the Adam. Take yeah. good care of these ladies. <laughs> but, but anyhow, so yeah, absolutely. So what you you're doing your own science experiment? Experiment. Yeah. So I'll send you one of those mats. And uh, just play with it and then let us know how it comes out. Yep. But you're going to have healthier, you know, the, they're just going to be healthier, period. Yeah, I I was thinking, I saw that you guys just came out with the throw. Uh -huh. And I think I'm going to buy a couple of them because um, pigs, you know, you were on a ranch, so you had pigs, you know how strong they are and how yeah, they like to sure. rip things up. And I'm worried that the foam mats, that they'll just rip them to pieces. But I okay. think the throw that they won't be able to. Yeah, I also have uh, <clears throat> mats, matting, you know, like the the like the like uh, sleep mats. Yeah. Okay, we, we have some of that material with adhesive on the back. Oh. So you could just lay it down. Um, uh, in order to take it up, you'd have to use, um, you know, a, some kind of a, hair dryer or something to warm, okay. the glue, to warm the glue, take it up. Otherwise, it might be messy. But if you want to experiment, I'll, I can send you some of that also. But the they would also, yeah, they would love, because the dogs absolutely love the throws. Mm. We sell we sell the pet beds and all that. Um, but the, what the animals like are the throws. Okay. Because they're they're grounded, they snuggle up in them and you know, so on. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyhow, yeah, just give me your address and I will get you some stuff to play with. I'll send you both and you just play with them. Thank you uh, so but much. You, but you can That's... also tape you can also tape the rubber mat down also. Oh, that is true. That's double true. Sided, double sided. I could try that. You know and something. Be... You know something else that I noticed is that um, I crate train all of my piglets before they leave so that they you know, they travel well and all that stuff. And I notice that, um, they paw the bottom of the crate. Yes. yes. Some of them literally do it constantly for hours. And right. any ideas on that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and again, we don't have studies on it, but just right. 25 years of observations. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you see an animal that doesn't feel good, What's the first thing they do? They usually paw some dirt away yeah. and they lay down, put yeah. their belly against the into the dirt. If an animal gets injured, like cats and dogs and those kind of animals, and tear each other up, <clears throat> they'll all of a sudden they're gone. You don't know where they are. But what yeah. they've done is they've gone under a porch or wherever and they dig paw the ground up, get down to where there's moisture, where there's dampness, where the ground is stronger. And, and then they lay on it until they heal up. Um, but these dogs and animals in these crates and stuff, they're pawing, they're trying to get down to dirt. They're trying, they know that's, habitually they know that's what they need to feel better. Wow. To get grounded. It makes me sad that I didn't know that. I mean, I've been doing this for several years and I've seen these piglets do these things, but I just didn't know why they were doing them. Well, if all animals do this, horses, every one of them do it. Wow. You know, they're they're always pawing ground, trying to get grounded. Just like horses, you know, they put the shoes on them, and that holds the uh, you know holds the the hoof up. But the frog is needs to touch the earth, mm -hmm. and if it's not, then it loses its ground. But they, when they wear shoes on, they're always pawing around too. It's like a horse. If you want to get them well. Just take the shoes off, put them out in the pasture, and in a few months they're back to normal. 
it baffles my mind that more people don't know this. Well, first of all, you have to realize that in 1950s, television came along and then the plastics came along. And so it's just this confluence of all these things happening, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. Yeah. And then we take it all for granted. And then television, once the, the screens came, you know, the TV screen and then the computer screen and then, uh, you know, all of these things. Uh, so we've been captured by the light, you know, like yeah. moth drawn to the flame. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> and we didn't realize that uh, we're frying ourselves. It's, it's a double-edged sword. Anytime yeah. you do something out of nature, there's some maybe good benefits, but there's also consequences. Yeah. There's an equal amount of consequences, everything. But yeah, I feel for the animals. Uh, I, uh, you know, we sell millions of those uh, mini or uni universal mats. And, you know, they're 12 or 13 inches by 20 or 30 inches or something. Um, but those are pet mats. Um, I call them poor mats, bed pad. They can't afford a regular bed, but they can afford a $59 one. And they yeah. sleep on that. And people love them. Um, but but they are, they are a great pet mat. Uh, the, the problem with pets is, uh, is where the connector is connecting to the mat. They always chew on things or right. you know, rabbits and pet you know, rodents of any kind are just terrible Yeah, because they they chew the wires and eat the wires and stuff. <clears throat> but these mats that I'm going to send you uh, or these things I'm going to send you, you can play with different things, but, but I'll send you some flat tape that we use in the uh, grounding yoga studios where it's just an inch wide, but it's totally conductive. It's just tape that goes on the floor. And so you can run it over to an outlet and then, connected to the outlet. Oh, that, I am so excited to try this. Thank yeah. you so much. No, you're welcome. Yeah. I have loved talking to you, but I don't want to take up your whole day. I seriously am a talker and you are too. So we could talk for <laughs> hours, but That's true. I don't want to, I don't want to do that to you. Yeah. So yeah. if people are interested in finding out more, where can they find more information? Well, the, um, on YouTube, there's two movies. There's a 15-minute movie, which is there's been a hundred million or more people who watched that thing, and then the Earthing movie uh, is an hour, 15 minutes. A lot of people don't watch it all at one time, but anyhow, it's a really good movie that kind of explains a lot of this, and um, and and everything is authentic, 100% authentic. Nothing is staged, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, Anyhow, it's an award-winning documentary. And it's a wonderful documentary. We've watched it many times. <laughs> okay, cool. And uh, and um, then the book, uh, if you don't have one, you can get them on Amazon, Earthing Book. Um, and otherwise, anybody buys a product, we always, with their first product, we always send a book out with it. And um, so, yeah, otherwise, you, if you want to learn, if you know anything about Earthing, you can go to the earthinginstitute.net and there's 20 some years worth of research there. And I think there's 30, 40, 50 published studies now. And we keep putting them up, putting them up and lots of questions and answers. Anybody has any kind of a question and answer. Uh, if we just send in a question, somebody will answer it or identify where to go and tell you what to do. If you're looking for a product, uh, earthing.com is the only one that has authentic earthing products and uh, they always we do everything we can to keep the prices as low as we possibly can because to me it's more of a humanitarian effort than it is a you know, get rich thing and uh, and if we make money we always put it back into research and so on so but anyhow it's uh, this is an important thing and uh, it's it's life changing uh, and and, and we, we, I try to take, I, I would say that 99% of our customers are female. Mm. And that's understandable because moms take care of the family and they take care of the health of the family. And the, the average mom that buys the product, first of all, is in her you know, 35 to 55 era. era. 
age range. And <clears throat> and then the first thing she does, buys a mat, tries it for a couple, three or four nights, and she says, oh, my God, this works. <laughs> and then she gives it to her mother, who, who she feels <laughs> is it worse than she does. The mother fights her about it. But anyhow, and then she ends up buying another one. Then she'll give that one to her sister. Whatever. The average woman buys 12 mats within a year just for family. Yeah, I believe that. I believe it. <laughs> when yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, when I watched the documentary, I sent it to almost everyone in my contacts. Yeah. Because everybody yeah. needs to know. Yeah, they need to know. And uh, and it's just, it's unbelievable because nobody ever taught us. Mm -hmm. I, I had this, it took me 20, you know, all these years to get, get dig this out of the dirt and get it to say, here it is, people, there's a problem here. We all need to pay attention. And and so business won't get involved. Uh, conventional business won't get involved until the general population. There's a significant amount of education and demand. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. when there's money to be made, they'll all jump in. Right. But that, uh, but it's like anything else. Uh, so, so we're pioneering it and we're uh, doing anything we can to um, educate. It's all about education. All I do is educate. Um, mm -hmm. the, the products are basic. Uh, we're not, they're not the prettiest things in the world, but they work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, and they're affordable and they last. Most of all, they last. Yeah. A lot of the products that are being sold are, in the early days, we made cotton sheets with silver in them. Mm -hmm. But after we made a few of them, they kept going bad so fast uh, because of body perspiration or whatever, or washing or whatever. Mm -hmm. The silver would oxidize. And then we would get a 20% return rate. And so I said, we can't do that. So we had to stop that. But since then, the China uh, companies have started manufacturing those yes. in mass. And they're everywhere. Yes. And most people, most people when I'm talking will order one of those before they even find out there is an earthing.com. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. So, I ordered one for my son's bed because he has chronic issues with his health. And yeah. I heard had heard of, it could help years ago. And I bought yeah. him a cheap one. Yeah. And that's fine. I figured, you know, in the worst case, at least they're doing, they're educating people. Yeah. <laughs> and, and eventually they all want to find you. <laughs> yeah, eventually will. So that's kind of the model. In the meantime, we just keep doing getting the research knocked out. Mm -hmm. And um and, and the other thing too, I want to tell you about your animals, you'll they'll be a lot calmer. Oh yeah. They'll be happier. They'll be happier. They won't be as you know, because uh, that's one of the number one things that uh, reduces anxiety and irritability in uh in animals. Oh wow. Yeah. Pigs are high strung anyways, very, yes, very much especially so. when they're in the house and people kind of take those natural jobs away from them, like finding food or building a nest and then they yes. get bored <laughs> and then yeah. they get destructive. And yeah, they, they can definitely have high anxiety and just issues with not being able to settle. Yeah. As soon as you put them on the mat, they'll just automatically settle down. All right. Just I'm, I'm going to test this. I'm going to do it. And yeah. I'm, I'm very and excited to see what happens. And then you can write a story and then you can start doing your own blogs on grounded pigs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you're already doing that. Okay. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So yeah. Anyhow, any questions you have, be, feel free to contact us. Um, you can Google almost anything on uh, any health disorder now, inflammation, health disorder and grounding or earthing. Uh, earthing is, is what this technically is the correct name because you're earthing things you're oh, earthing people okay grounding is making two things at the same potential grounding doesn't always imply earthing uh, oh i did not know that well, okay nobody, yeah <laughs> it's just in the united states it's kind of grounding is a slang term okay uh, and a lot of electrical people use the word ground because it's earth ground dirt mm -hmm. ground right <clears throat> but the technical name earthing means to connect it to the earth okay that is great. We're going to put all the links to everything in the show notes oh, so cool. that people can find them very easily. And I just, again, want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. I appreciate it. I learned a lot. And I hope that we can kind of pioneer this, um, helping pigs to make yeah. sure they get grounded. And, oh, and right. every, make sure they earth. That's the correct term. And get every other animal. Yes, true. Domestic animal. Yeah, they all have the same issues. 
Yes. And uh, and this is this, this is it's essential because going to a vet is outrageous now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's outrageous, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that a lot of those are preventative right. health disorders. They don't need to be. I mean, right. So, I enjoyed it. Talk to me anytime. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again, Clint. You bet. I'm glad for the opportunity. Appreciate it.